in the theme of beyond the spotlight, uh, technology permeation hasn't happened in the real estate industry. And I want to uh, lay some context, some groundwork, and talk about the future of real estate uh, technology or property technology as we know it. So uh, the history of real estate is something that I uh, want to start with to contextualize the space. And uh, you know, it is the oldest business in the world. Uh, from the times of the Romans building the Colosseums, the ancient Greeks, the Freemasons, at all times the upward surge of mankind or uh, the mark of a civilization's progress has been seen in the great structures that it builds and um, building of great structures has been central to pushing forward any kind of, um, any kind of civilization towards its uh, most optimum state. Finally, uh, property is, uh, of, uh, is, is, is just beneath one's fundamental rights. It is a primary need. Uh, so in India, we've known this as roti kapda makan, uh, which is basically your right to food, to clothing, and to shelter. Finally, in the global psyche, what is ownership of property? When does a person go and acquire property? And what does that mean in terms of their own life? When a person acquires property, it is a major announcement to themselves and to the world that a major life milestone has been achieved and that the person has now arrived in life. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the notion of real estate. If I told you real estate, the first thing that would come to your mind would be a builder, and a builder would be a stereotype of, of, of Singhanya Saab. We call uh, this uh, caricature internally Singhanya Saab. This is a theme of a 90s movie where the builder is intent on destroying the slum dwellers and the angry young man Amitabh Bachchan is going to fight this evil. He's going to save all the slum dwellers from the big bad evil builder who deals in cash, who's on his cell phone and you know making fly-by-night deals and you know is, is the gold chain wearing stereotype which is kind of the pejorative uh, pop cultural sense that now exists about real estate and about builders. However, while this perception is true, real estate is central to any portfolio or any allocation. Almost all people will either own or want to own real estate. And how would you peg real estate against other asset classes in this world of uh, you know, new asset classes like crypto and stuff? Real estate is the most risk adjusted return or the most balanced asset class. It has also been the longest asset class uh, because people since the beginning of time have tried to build homes and tried to build shelter for themselves. So, uh, you know, real estate is between your cash and fixed deposits on one side, which are defensive asset classes where inflation basically reduces cash and fixed deposits value. And on the other side, you have stocks and paper assets, which include but are not limited to alternative assets like crypto. So those will experience high returns and high volatility. But the interesting thing to note here is that real estate or property is the only utilitarian asset class which in and of itself has value. This came to the fore with COVID. What happened is people realized that one can live in their home. One can't do anything with money except spend it. One can't do anything with crypto except spend it. It in and of itself give, like has no utility. But a home, a property serves a dual purpose of investment and of course um, uh, utility of living in the house itself. Noting this centrality, Indian real estate was propelled years forward in 2014 with the coming in of the Modi government. And as you uh, can see, from 2014, there was a very clear agenda to, uh, for every Indian to own a home. This was a central goal, and this is of uh, deep importance to the nation in its journey to becoming developed. Uh, in 2015, we had the Pra Pradhan Mandri Awas Yojana, which was launched and, and the, the vision or the mission for housing for all was announced. 
Subsequently, in 2016, you had the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. You have a slew of reforms. In 2017, you had RERA. So real estate became a regulated industry. And then, of course, things like relaxation and FDI rules, which allowed foreign capital to come in. India's first REIT came about in 2019. Why all this matters is because the government realized the centrality and from 2014 to 2020 worked very hard to try and make real estate linear, standardized, uh, growth friendly, capital friendly and allow for a huge amount of investment to come in. However, in 2020, COVID hits and we get a brutal reality check. When COVID hits in 2020, we realize that India does not have any real estate digital infrastructure and our systems are not transaction ready. We also realize that the digitization of other spaces have happened. Of course, everybody knows um, about fintech and we all use all kinds of different fintech platforms. We all know about edutech. But have you ever heard about real estate technology or some path breaking uh, new way in which uh, the market is more transaction friendly? or anything like that. Then you have uh, real estate being stuck in a pen and paper era as late as 2020, when the entire uh, India has the ability to consume low cost data on cheap mobile phones. So it's the first time that this is actually even possible, but this is a time when uh, COVID induced lockdown causes 7 million migrants to be stranded in Bombay. This is the centrality and importance of this sector. <laughs> so there's no comfort for the biggest transactions in people's lives. And finally, this is where our story begins. We realize the importance and the necessity of building digital infrastructure in real estate because there was no functionality, indexation, or any kind of future readiness. We weren't, real estate wasn't in the 21st century. Home buyers had it really bad. Anybody who's experienced home buying or anybody's parents who've experienced home buying, you would have heard you have to talk to six, seven brokers, then they'll talk to six, seven developers, and on different days, untimed, ad hoc, non-linear, they'll go visit projects, they'll get improper information, search online is broken, so people basically just try to beat the SEO by pricing it a little bit lower, and nobody actually knows, uh, you know, transaction data at their fingertips to be able to make informed choices. So. That's up to the point where a person reaches the home that they want to buy. Thereafter, a whole new cycle of pain begins for the home buyer because there's stamp duty and registration. There's the process of adjudication. There's the process of bringing that uh, into the home loan realm and home loan readiness. And finally, you have uh, any kind of prejudicial redressal is through your broker. So uh, home buyers really had a really bad time with this. And to put it in perspective for everybody here, think about when you order Swiggy, right? So you have a 50 rupee price point, you order Diet Coke and they send you Coke. How many different grievance redressal mechanisms do you have? They, there's an AI powered chatbot which will interact with you. There's automated action where the new item that is mistakenly reached you will uh, be replaced for the new item. Uh, the, the system will call you through a telecaller, they will SMS you, the app will give you information. And that kind of beauty exists at a 50 rupee transaction price point. But if you were buying a 5 crore rupee home, you would not have that. You would be dealing with the Ghansham bhais and the Radha bhais. And these guys would be talking to the developer, the builder that we saw as our stereotype. And the entire process would be uh, fully, uh, it would be painful, uh, it would lack delight, and a person is making the biggest decision of their life, but actually, uh, you know, receiving zero customer service in what we believe to be the greatest consumer economy going forward. So uh, the buyer finally buys the home and uh, with great pain moves into their home. What's next? Let's talk about real estate in 2020 versus what real estate will be in 3030. And why this is so critical is because while today real estate contributes 5% of Indian GDP and is a $120 billion industry, in 2030 it is expected to contribute 13% of India's GDP. It is the second largest employer and is expected to be the second largest employer in India after agriculture itself. 
um, India's uh, per capita income is expected to triple from here on. 300 million youth are expected to be in the workforce in 2030 and 100 million homes are expected to be built and sold between 2020 and 2030 as per the Niti Aayog. So the centrality of real estate to ancillaries like cement, steel, credit, banking, infrastructure cannot be overstated because if a person is not able to buy a home, if a builder is not building a home, all the ancillary stop, the prices of cement move, the prices of steel move, the demand supply gets messed up. So it is that central as the second largest employer in India, as a 13% contributor to GDP in 2030, that we solve all these problems. This is where we came in and we said that as an entrepreneur, I want to solve this problem and I want to make India transaction ready. If the government is pushing for 100 million home, homes to be built and sold, 100 smart cities and great visions that exist, and so many people in India need to get homes, we want to make that happen in the most intelligent system and provide the kind of experience and the customer friendliness that, that a 50 rupee transaction, as we already discussed, provides the customer. So where is the tech, right? So in real estate, there's the application of so many technologies that is possible. You have the ability to uh, use AR, VR, drone tech, and IoT devices uh, to be able to give people the best visualization experience in the world where they are able to make better decisions by looking at the property they are buying. You, you, uh, blockchain enables us to build decentralized ledgers which are able to index the entire transaction market and for the first time create a kind of index that you see on a stock market, an exchange, which allows people to standardize property transactions. IoT devices can enable people to understand what is the exact amount of uh, time that a customer is spending on what questions when they visit a site, what is of importance to them, is it amenities, is it price, is it location, and to continually enhance their experience. Um, so with all these technologies, I want to now come to uh, painting a vision of the future and uh, tell you about what we are trying to do and what we are building and how that will transform property technology in India forever and propel India into the 21st century of the real estate business. There are three stakeholders in the real estate transaction. You have the builder, you have the broker, and you have the buyer. The builder, broker, and buyer as a first step need to be connected. And why would they be connected? The builder, broker, and buyer over a hundred plus years of uh, Indian real estate history have traditionally worked in an ad hoc manner. And because it is such an essential asset class that people have to buy homes, at the end of the day, like all things in India, the job gets done. But the idea is, it is completely um, a market uh, covered with opacity, uh, mistrust, uh, you know, that, that back of the mind feeling that something shady is going on, we don't really know or have confidence as to uh, the purchase. We don't know our uh, consumer preference. So, so given this, what happens is the connectivity between the builder, the broker, and the buyer becomes central as the first node making the first transactions in real estate happen. These nodes then feed data into a centralized artificial intelligence, which, which takes from one data warehouse which records every transaction. So let me play out the scenario for you. A person decides to buy a home. When they buy a home, when they're going down that journey, they'll have multiple interactions with the broker, multiple interactions with the buyer, with the developer. They'll visit multiple sites. They'll think about many things. They'll talk about many things. They'll think it's expensive, cheap. We'll see how fast the market adapts, how much inventory is sold, how fast. As all of this data gets embedded into a central data warehouse, which then runs one centralized artificial intelligence on it, what happens is that artificial intelligence becomes Adam Smith's invisible hand, which causes market equilibrium. And in some sense, therefore, becomes a reflection of the market itself. Uh, the second layer of this becomes that when that data is ready and it provides insights and the intelligent system is able to understand 
everything that there is to know about a real estate transaction. We believe in 2030, uh, builders will be able to forecast demand. They will be able to estimate prices correctly. They will, there, there'll be perfect project planning, demand supply, predictive analysis, procurement analysis. So just in time procurement happens, which allows cash flows to be managed. And uh, a, a, a large industry will be able to sell real estate better. Brokers will be able to have the perfect selling tool and it will cause an Uberization effect where people who weren't drivers, who were university students, decided to drive for a few hours in their spare time, uh, drive Ubers because it was so easy, because all you needed was the one app. This is what we believe will be the opportunity for Indians to be self-employed and become brokers because the entire stack, your entire brokerage management, invoicing, um, access to a wide range of data, lead generation ability, marketing ability, will all be automated based off that central AI brain. Finally, the buyer, who we've already spoken about uh, a few times through my presentation, will experience for the first time a joyful home buying purchase. The buyer for the first time will have price transparency owing to seeing so many transactions which will be embedded into the AI, which will be able to therefore tell the buyer insightfully whether it's a value for purchase decision, whether it is a luxury decision, whether it is a decision based on demand and supply, whether there's too much or too little stock in the market. Uh, Bio will also benefit massively by having a wide selection which is comparable pari pasu. Finally, what happens is insights and price trends which come up offer unparalleled convenience where people can book five visits, three virtually, two physically, and in one day conclude a journey which today would take three to six months. We believe that the artificial intelligence at the center of the entire real estate market playing the role of the invisible hand which causes the market equilibrium is the final step in evolving Indian property technology into the 21st century and making it uh, on par with, with global economies. And if India has to become a superpower and India becomes a eight, 10 trillion dollar economy over the next 10 years, real estate will have to have a central role in that owing to its percentage contribution to GDP and its role as the second largest employer in India. With that, I want to uh, leave you with this vision of the future, uh, powered by centralized data and powered by artificial intelligence, which hopefully will solve India's problems of trust deficit in real estate and will cause a 21st century transaction ready, perfect market for home buyers to experience joy and delight in their home buying transactions. Thank you.